I'm Jeff Alvarez, the Chief Strategy Officer at Marine Surgical, where we're focused on um, increasing the efficiency of healthcare delivery for every patient in every operating room. Now, I think we can all agree that the U.S. healthcare system is in trouble. Uh, over the last 10 years, we've seen 136 different hospitals uh, go out of business, and this has left entire communities without access to care. Um, places like Sonora, California, and Clinton, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's just going to continue, because what we're seeing today is that 49% of hospitals are uh, operating at a deficit. Uh, and a large part of that has to do with staffing costs. There's significant turnover, there's significant staffing shortages, uh, and the gap is getting closed with temporary staff, which costs almost twice as much. We're going to see in the future that this trend is going to continue. And it's also going to move into a deficit of surgeons. Um, access to care is definitely in jeopardy. At Moon Surgical, we're focused on changing the trajectory of this problem. It, it, it's in one of the largest surgical categories uh, in hospitals today, which is laparoscopy. Uh, it makes up 13 million procedures annually, uh, and it's a very manual, tedious, and highly variable uh, procedure. At Moon, we're enabling the operating room of tomorrow uh, that's powered by the Maestro ecosystem. It is solving systematic issues across laparoscopy operating rooms and delivering uh, benefits to doctors, nurses, patients, and hospitals. Uh, we improve confidence of the surgeon, uh, usability, um, uh, increase access, and ultimately help improve the bottom line. Uh, less staff in the operating room overall, uh, with fewer complications, less pain, less fatigue for the surgeon, uh, and less staff turnover. The system, uh, which you see on the right, can actually set itself up based on the surgeon's preferences. It adapts off-the-shelf uh, instruments uh, to it that can be then roboticized and allows the surgeon to actually operate with much less staff in the room. It has autonomous scope capabilities and can be quickly readjusted for port hopping or multi-quadrant surgery. The system uh, is also very easy to use, very fluid, and is at the center of the operating room where we can understand the position of the table, how things are changing, uh, and guide the system in its placement. Interoperatively, we can actually see the different stages and interpret the different stages of a procedure so that we know where we're at in the procedure, as well as start to identify critical tissues and anatomies. The system has a lot of uh, unique capabilities. It's a very small footprint, uh, and so it can fit into a lot of different operating rooms. It uh, has two very resistant free arms that are easy to move around um, and allow the fluidness of laparoscopy to be maintained. Uh, again, it engages off-the-shelf instruments, um, so preferred instrument set that a surgeon has can be attached to the system, and they can use it uh, in any procedure that they would like. Um, the, the system has a lot of unique sensing as well. It's instrumented with uh, three-dimensional cameras so that we can observe where the surgeon is, where their staff is, the bed, uh, and make lots of interpretations from it. The arms themselves are high force sensors so that we understand surgical technique and the intent that the surgeon has on interacting with the tissue. And lastly, we have a variety of proximity sensors that understand how things are moving around the system, just like we have in today's cars. The overall ecosystem is comprised of four parts. Uh, it has the Maestro system at, at its core, uh, the access program, which is focused on enabling uh, systems to be placed in every operating room uh, in any facility and ensuring that all patients have access to the latest technology. The OR intelligence program brings in a lot of the data that our system collects and really starts to close the loop for the first time in the operating room and become the operating system of the OR. 
uh, driving continuous improvement, and then customer success, ensuring that every touch point with our customer is a uh, well-curated experience using modern tools, simplified billing, uh, and uh, you know, data-driven customer service. So how does it all work? The operating room uh, has Maestro in the center, and this uh, Maestro can actually bring in uh, information like the staff configuration, equipment locations, instrument types, the surgical approach being used, and the timing of the procedure. All of that data is brought in and can be uh, sent up to our cloud, where it is then analyzed and interpreted, and then fed into our customer success program, where we'd run system diagnostics, we use it to drive our service and repair activities, we offload and manage inventory of all of our consumables, and then improve our training as new people are coming in and out of that hospital as well. The last thing is we generate insights from all of these analytics and be, are able to provide that back to the hospital, the staff, and the surgeon in insights where they can then translate it into action and improve the experience in the operating room. Now, one of the things that's really important is the market that we're going after, and this is why it can have such a big impact in hospitals today. Today, there's over 30,000 laparoscopy rooms in the United States. And after 20 years of robotic commercialization, there's only a little over 4,800 robotic systems in use in these operating rooms. The amount of real estate out there is significant. These operating rooms uh, perform over 13 million laparoscopies every year. And compared to the robotic approach, that's only 780,000. We're a clinical stage company. Uh, we did a lot of development in uh, engaging surgeons um, and, and cadaver labs. Uh, we've done 55 procedures uh, in humans across seven indications, highlighting the flexibility and adaptability of our system. Administrators love it. We did a lot of interviews in the development as well. Here's a CFO talking about how fantastic the system is and how excited he is. Surgeons love it. They say it's an absolute joy to use, and they would use it every day as well. We have a great team of leaders that have lots of experience in surgical robotics, as well as a board that uh, is well-recognized in the industry, including our chairman, Dr. Fred Mull. In terms of uh, our timeline, we really got started at the beginning of 2021 uh, with a 5 million seed, and we were able to assemble our team of eight people, design a robot, and get it into a first human clinical by mid-2022. We raised this 31 million Series A, led by GT Healthcare, uh, and participation by J&J. &J. We used that to uh, design our commercial system, which I'm happy to report has just received C mark yesterday. We've just recently closed a 55 million Series B, led by Sophie Nova Partners and NVIDIA Ventures as well. We'll be doing an EU pilot at the end of this month and starting a limited market release in the United States in January of 2024. At Moon Surgical, we're always interested in connecting with bankers and investors and like-minded entrepreneurs that love this space, and we're happy to talk with you. Thank you.